Nebraska on tap, the source for everything educational and informational about groundwater in agriculture. If you are an ag producer or a citizen of Nebraska, this show is made for you by the Middle Republican Natural Resource District. Now it's time for our weekly show, hosted by Heather Disming. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Nebraska on Tap. This week, I'm excited to share my interview that I had with Jesse Corris. And Jesse is an associate professor and groundwater geologist at the Conservation and Survey Division in the School of Natural Resources. And he is going to tell us a little bit about what him and Jared Abram do with AEM. Jared is the principal geophysicist with Aqua Geo Frameworks which provides these AEM studies for us here. So I got these two guys together to discuss a little bit about what's going on with the AEM surveys and how that affects all of us. So stay tuned for the interview that I had with them. It is really informational and great. I am here with Jesse and Jared, and we are going to talk a little bit about what they have been doing for the AEM. So if, Jared, you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you did with the AEM here. Yes, uh, Jared Abraham. I'm a geologist, a geophysicist with Aqua Geo Frameworks, and we've had the privilege of working with the NRD on several projects over the years on collecting airborne geophysical data to help with aquifer modeling. My background is in geology. I worked with USGS for quite some time, and I've been working around Nebraska extensively and around uh, the world in collecting data like this and to be used in recreating geological and hydrogeologic models. So the way this system works is uh, we basically fly over the earth with this loop. And just like a metal detector, what's interesting about how the physics works is as you fly over the earth, you're inducing a current. And if you fly over what we call electrically conductive materials, you'll get a signal. If you fly over areas of electrical resistive materials, you'll get a lower signal. Now, why is this important? Well, we're really fortunate in aquifer mapping Resistive materials are typically freshwater saturated sands and gravels. Conductive materials are typically silts, clays, and shales. Well, the Middle Republican is a perfect environment because the aquifers that really matter here are composed of coarse grain materials, sands and gravels and sandstones, and the aquacludes or the non-aquifer areas are your silts and clays. So we have an electrical contrast what we can do is flying over the earth, we fly about 100 feet off the surface of the earth with this contraption. I've heard it called a dream capture and I've had a sheriff show up. Someone says you're flying a ladder around. <laughs> you know, I, I've heard all sorts of things, but it's think of it as a big metal detector. We're able to fly over the surface and get information on the materials down to about a thousand feet, which is perfect for the middle Republican because we're, we're within that range for the aquifers. The aquifers here are usually shallower, more on the 200 feet or less. So as we fly around, we see patterns, not only spatially, but in depth. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the key. Using the great information that the Conservation Survey Division, the U.S. Geological Survey, and the Department of Natural Resources have with the registered well database, you can really make some amazing uh, predictions, inferences, and create a 3D model of what the aquifer looks like. And that kind of brings us into Jesse here, who joins us today from UNL. Yeah, my name is Jesse Corus. I'm a geologist and associate professor in the Conservation and Survey Division in the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. We are the Nebraska Geological Survey, 
And we have a history that dates back over 130 years um, of working throughout the state to help understand our geology, our water resources, and other aspects of our natural resources. So we've been uh, working with the Middle Republican NRD since about 2017 on various projects related to hydrogeologic mapping. Um, and we've, we've completed some coarse scale maps of the hydrogeology. Um, but once we did that, we realized that we really needed more detailed information, uh, which sort of led us down this path to doing airborne electromagnetics. And as Jared explained, um, what the, the product that uh, his company delivers for us is uh, an electrical resistivity map of the Earth's subsurface. Well, uh, when we go to, say, simulate how an aquifer uh, behaves over time and how it responds to pumping, what we want are hydrogeologic properties. So those properties of permeability, uh, which is a measure of the capacity of a geologic material to transmit water. We want those properties, the, the permeability properties, and not necessar necessarily electrical resistivity. So we have to do a few things to get to the product we want. So we take those resistivity models and uh, some of the stuff that we're working on currently is to apply different machine learning techniques and advanced statistical methods uh, to try to do a, an automatic transformation uh, using all the well information we have, all the uh, CSD test holes, as well as the airborne electromagnetic survey results uh, to come to a more complete understanding of the three-dimensional distribution of the rocks and sediments that lie beneath our feet and the properties of those rocks and sediments in how they transmit water. And so water is the biggest thing we're looking for here, correct? Yes, that's what the stimulus. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, everyone, of course, needs an airborne electromagnetic survey. Right. But it's much better when it's of something of use, right? Right, yeah. right. So, and that's really what's led to this. It's a little bit of the project history. Uh, when this started out uh, in 2020, after CSD's work that Jesse led, mm -hmm. uh, we did a test area or a, a single area, maybe to say, is this really going to be as valuable as we think it will be? So we completed that acquisition in 2020. The report came out in uh, late 2020, right before 21. And Jesse's team analyzed it. At that point, the district decided we want to fly the rest of mm -hmm. the areas of yes. aquifers. And so the district was split up into blocks. Mm -hmm. And so as of today, we've flown two more years of data acquisition, and we're going to be moving into our third year. And we do a piece of the district at a time. So we just finished uh, reporting on all the results from the 2023 acquisition, and we're getting ready to start the new acquisition to wrap up the geophysical phase. We look to be starting the end of June, beginning of July, and we're going to be doing two blocks, one out towards Trenton and one up kind of north, just south of the uh, Incorp area. Mm -hmm. And that'll wrap up the district. So we're really excited about this. It's going to be a nice continuous data set. Uh, we're going to be using the same technology, same system we've done before. And we just want to say so much thanks to uh, the great people in the area, the Cambridge Airport, uh, Red Willow Aviation at McCook, have treated us wonderful. The good folks at the Curtis Municipal Airport, everyone's been very supportive of this effort. And so we'll fly it kind of in that late June, July timeframe. And we look to have the final report out in November. At that point, it goes back to Jesse's team and they're gonna wrap up their geological model. Right, and really quick, Jesse. So clearly we're not the only ones who are benefiting from AEM here in the state. You have worked with Jared, honestly, extensively for quite a while throughout the whole entire state mapping around. And I just kind of wanted to know what fun things you have experienced mapping, just not only our area, but other areas in the state. Yeah, well, with every survey, there are always discoveries you know, what, what these surveys do is fill in the, what are the blind spots between the wells. 
and there's a lot of detail in those blind spots. So we're making discoveries all the time. Some of the things we've discovered here in the Middle Republican in, include some deeply buried channels, some of the details about those channels that we didn't know before. We're discovering things about the, the structural configuration of the bedrock and how it's been deformed over time. Um, and we've discovered things like that all throughout the parts of Nebraska that have been flown with, with AEM, including large portions of uh, eastern Nebraska, more and more places of uh, central and south-central Nebraska, and then out in the panhandle, uh, quite a few AEM surveys. And Jared's group and, and my group have looked at a lot of those. I suppose, you know, in the long run, once we compiled all this information and stitched it together, ideal situation would be we'd have a improved statewide maps of uh, the geology and hydrogeology that are informed by this AEM. And, and we're doing that through combinations of surveys of different vintages, different areas, and for different purposes. But yeah, stitching that all together into one comprehensive understanding would be ideal. I think we're getting there. This is this is the, the technology that you need uh, to use t- in order to do that. And so, yeah, with, with the Middle Republican NRD, after this year's surveys are flown, that will be five total blocks of AEM surveys. And what we will do is take all of those blocks and create one comprehensive geological model for the Middle Republican NRD. A consultant is currently building the, a groundwater model. We will use that geologic model as an input to the groundwater model. And that groundwater model will serve as a tool for the NRD to use to simulate water use in the district, uh, various scenarios of how to manage water. And so it'll be a very useful tool. It'll be state of the art, the best inputs that you can possibly have for it. Yeah. And I, I think that's just so great. It's a little off topic. It's just so wild how you have atmospheric rivers, you have rivers on land, and now you guys have, you know, are mapping a river underneath us, basically. It's pretty wild. Yeah, it's, it's really fun to be involved in, in this. And, um, you know, Nebraska as a whole is uh, one of the leading states in applying this technology and driving the science forward. So it's really exciting uh, to be a, a part of this and to, to be partnering with Jared's group, who is uh, really among the best in the world at what they do. So, yeah, it's been fun. I'd like to add, yeah. Nebraska, when they started this in 2007, has really become the most... AEM flown state in the country and of many other states, including California, now Kansas, North Dakota, are looking to Nebraska as examples as the challenges of groundwater management, groundwater availability uh, become more and more prominent in other places of the country. People are looking at Nebraska saying, well, how'd you guys do this? Well, how, how did you afford this? And, and the lessons on how to split it up into manageable uh, financial blocks, how to target what really matters, and really the integration of all the historical geology and drilling data. We're not destroying that. We're using that. We're augmenting that. We're going a step farther. And Nebraska is truly a leader in their NRD system. And a lot of states are taking notice of that. So Nebraska has a lot to be proud of. Yeah, um, for having you guys here, it's just wild as I've done this podcast, I've interviewed a lot of people and starting off with a very basic of history from Jerry Gary Vickers, her dad was a senator who got all these um, reservoirs out here started because of the floods and the, you know, and as just as people have moved in, they've just understood that this water is important out here. And so what you guys have is I feel like an evolution of, you know, people that started you know out here to you guys knowing what's out here and it's just wild that they would have dreamed about this you know a long time ago to have this information and it's just so great that now we're able to finally have it and just one more thing if you know if this has piqued your interest and you're interested in AEM I would point out that you can go to our website that's uh, go.unl.edu backslash AEM and you can learn about the airborne electromagnetic method and get access to the various products survey results that have been flown in nebraska and we're adding to that website throughout 2024 so not everything's up there yet but eventually it will house everything that has been been done in nebraska and really quick on that with the waves have you gotten your aem video to waves yet 
It's in the works. Okay. Yeah. And that okay. will be one of the videos you can access through this website, uh, which will be connected to Waves. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, again, gentlemen, as always, thank you so much. <laughs> you make me, you make me uh, feel full of knowledge, even though I don't, will never have as much as both of you combined ever. So thanks again for being a part of this, and I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Yeah. Some really great information there, huh? And again, thank you so much to Jared for being a guest not only once but twice on my show. The first time was with Alex, and we have that show available. I think it was like our um, second or third show that we had. I really appreciate that. And it was just awesome to be able to have Jesse here as well. Jared talked about him in that episode that we first did about how he works with him extensively when it comes to these groundwater models. And everything that they've been doing is just going to be so beneficial for what we have going on here um, in the NRD world with us being your water regulators for groundwater. So again, thanks so much for staying tuned today for our full interview with Jared and Jesse. I hope you appreciated it. If you want to check out more episodes, please go to our website, www.nebraskaontap.com. You can also um, check out our Facebook page, which is under our Middle Republican NRD. We also are on Instagram as NebraskaOnTap.com. On Twitter as NebraskaOnTap.com. You can also go to our YouTube page to get visual representation of this episode. You can go to our RSS feed and find all of our episodes. You can go to Spotify and also Apple Podcasts. Once again, thanks for joining us this week. Please feel free to like and subscribe our page. We always appreciate the subscriptions. And we will talk to everybody next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.